Uh, I am Josh Fenton. With me is Mr. Innovation Saul Kaplan. I want to thank our friends over at Deepwater Wind, speaking of innovation. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Uh, the biggest deal uh, in the world uh, got finalized uh, functionally over the weekend. Uh, it still needs some federal regulatory review, but CVS acquiring Aetna for the functionally the biggest healthcare company in the world. What an uh, incredible deal. Uh, I'm so excited about this for Rhode Island. You know, it's personal for me going all the way back to my days as a pharmacist graduating from URI many, many moons ago. Who did you uh, work for? Right, right. I came, I, I knew at the end of Did you work at Brooks? I filled prescriptions for just a, such a short time. I knew I wasn't going to uh, work behind a prescription counter. And I always believed that pharmacists could do a lot more mm -hmm. in the healthcare continuum. Sure. Uh, and so fast forward to today where you know, you've got uh, CVS uh, on a path to acquire Aetna to disrupt health care, you know, which is such good news for CVS you know, playing offense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's good news for Rhode Island because it'll be headquartered here, right. you know, which is amazing. What, like the number two company when you add up uh, their the revenues revenue, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, in America, right. headquartered right here in Rhode Number Island. four in EBITDA right. yeah, in the United pretty States. Pretty amazing. Uh, pretty amazing uh, stuff. A Deal that uh, they say is going to be accretive or adding a value economically, you know, within the second year, uh, and pretty neutral in the first year. I mean, it's pretty amazing uh, all around, and a lot of interesting aspects of it. So lots we can talk about. So let's talk about. Uh, do you want to go good news first or bad <laughs> news first? I'm a good news guy. You know all right, that? let's do good news. So uh, second largest company in America in revenue, fourth largest in EBITDA. Right. Uh, it is. This is. You know, Ford buying uh, uh, Chrysler. This is an order of magnitude as big a deal as you can do in the last ten years. It's, I think, the tenth largest deal in the world. Yeah. The only thing is, it's not like Ford buying Chrysler, right? right? Because if it was Ford buying Chrysler, it would be chain drugstore buying another chain drugstore. Right. Right. It'd be like, right. it'd be like uh, CVS buying Walgreens, you know, and then a completely dominating right, the whole right. retail you know, drug business, only to be disrupted, you know, by Jeff Bezos. Is it, is you know, it comes at it a completely different way. Is it like yeah. Ford buying yeah. Yeah. Route ninety five? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, or Ford buying Uber, you know, yeah, or maybe right. it's the other way around. Right. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but the, the thing that's exciting to me about this is it's CVS playing offense. It's them being a market maker. Yeah. You know, the difference between a share taker and a market maker, most of the world and most companies are share takers. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with that. This is the industry we compete in. We're a retail you know, drugstore chain. We compete with Walgreens and other you know, drugstore chains. Sure. Uh, and the way we win is we take a share point away, you know, from Walgreens, right? Market makers don't think that way. They say, we're not in the chain drugs for business. We're in the healthcare business. We're going to completely disrupt all the players in healthcare by delivering better value to the consumer and to families, you know, because we have this almost 10,000 store network that touches more healthcare consumers than any other healthcare player in the market. And we're going to deliver transformational experiences to them. And it's going to be good for the customer and it's going to be good for us commercially. This is right? the biggest thing to hit the Blackstone. Valley since uh, Samuel uh, Slater uh, yeah. stole a yeah. bunch of stuff and came Telford, across Telford the know-how uh, and, 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 and brought it over. This is a very big deal for Rhode Island because you know when's the last time that that a company was the aggressor, the acquirer to become this large nationally? Right. You know, and it's here instead of what we've experienced over the last X number of years, where it's gone the other way, where we've been acquired. Companies here have been gobbled up. Right. And then you start to lose control. You know, Fleet Bank of America. Right. right? You know, but the Fleet oh, had that yeah. run. So they yeah. bought bank after bank right. after bank, uh, both on the East Coast and then across the country. It was became the ninth largest bank, I think, at its height. And then shh, right. it's gone. In this case, there really isn't anybody bigger to buy. I mean, you're really talking about Walmart is about the only one who could buy a CBS well, and this, uh, and in America this has today. the potential to completely reorganize and don't we desperately need to reorganize healthcare, yeah. right? Because right. costs are out of control. How do we deliver better healthcare experiences, help families take better care of themselves? And to do that in a way that delights customers, but to do it in a way, you know, that, that takes costs out of the healthcare system instead of the path we've been on, which is keep adding to the cost structure without delivering better Who would have thought right? that the entire American healthcare system 
would not be reinvented by Obamacare or anyone else, but by potentially a company in Woonsocket, Rhode Island? Well, I would never have thought we would uh, we'd be able to reorganize health care with the stroke of a legislative pen. Right. Right. Not that that doesn't play a role, but I think... Is this a lesson about free market versus uh, about government? Is this is this is there a learning from this? Listen, we haven't seen all the indications of what this is going to look like in 24 or 36 months from now. But is this a little bit of a peek under the tent as to, you know, when business gets to do business, it potentially has uh, a stronger ability to reform and change and transform. Obviously, you need some controls on it, some regulatory structure. But is this the real change in healthcare in America? Well, I think the real change here is to go you know, from uh, horizontal integration where they keep gobbling each other up, playing yep. the same game they were playing before, right. which is how CVS got as big, you know, as it is. In, Except in for the Caremark. Right, right. Except and for then Caremark. they went Caremark and yep. PBM. Yep. So I think they've been on market-making waves, you know, for, for, in their history. First, yep. to consolidate the chain drugstore business. Right. Second, to go into the drug benefit through PBMs. Yep. Now, here we go with what, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'll call the third wave, yep. right, which has the potential to be the biggest wave yet, which is how do we put ourselves in the, in the position of transforming healthcare? Yeah. You know, first and foremost for customers, right, and then also for commercial benefit, which is fine. And so here we go with a disruptive play, where the disruptor is here in Rhode Island, and all of the headquarters-related jobs and all of that economic activity comes back here, which is exactly what we want. I hope the state continues to aggressively make themselves relevant to the transformation of healthcare that CVS is clearly trying to put themselves in a position to lead. What is it about our geography here that becomes the place where we come up with those new healthcare models, right. right? And how do we make sure that we protect our consumers, but at the same time, not allow local stakeholders to block or slow down the disruption? You want CVS to model the change here in Rhode Island. This is why Rhode Island is a unique place for innovation at scale, right? We've got to be the place where CVS believes that their headquarters state is the place where we can reimagine what that looks like. What should we do to, uh, and without giving away hundreds yep. of million dollars in subsidies, what else can we do? Yep. It's really, listen, money's not the factor yep. for this company. They've paid $69.9 billion uh, to acquire uh, Aetna. So, you know, $30 million in tax subsidies is not the solution here. What can Rhode Island do from a environmental standpoint? What's the... What's yep. the argument that this is literally the best place yep. to continue to grow uh, across the country and potentially, I mean, literally across the yep. world? Well, we can we can go the traditional route and say, you know, kind of improve the education and workforce development system so right. the workforce and talent and skills are here, you know, for CBS to continue to fill those jobs. Right. Here. But I'm going to go more strategic, right? I think just the same answer when we talked about, you know, Amazon, you know, and when they're looking for their second headquarters. Right. Make Rhode Island strategic, right? Make Rhode Island the place where we can get ideas for new ways to serve customers off of the whiteboard onto the ground here in Rhode Island, and then they can scale that across their 10,000 store network. So when you go back to Minute Clinic, you know, which CBS bought, right, which was an innovation and a, and a point on the path towards this healthcare transformation, yep. but was Rhode Island the first place to welcome that, to allow those experiments to happen? Did that innovation happen here? Did it get modeled here? I think the answer to that is no, it wasn't. Right. In fact, if you go look at when did Rhode Island stop resisting putting Minute Clinics into a CVS store, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah, many, no. many other states had been receptive to that idea long before Rhode yeah, Island. Yeah, it was 10, 15 like, states were already like, had. You want to be strategic to reinventing healthcare? Rhode Island needs to make themselves you know, the, the supportive of and create the conditions for CVS to explore these new models so that they happen here. That's so are we at a friction do. point right now? You know, you see this great divide in Rhode Island right now. The governor's bringing in outside companies and paying, in some cases, a hefty sum to bring them in. And there seems to be, that's one strategy that, in her vision, she believes we've got to bring in these forward-thinking companies, and they're expensive to bring them in. There seems to be a lot of pushback from Rhode Islanders and Rhode Island companies who say, hey, listen, we're here. 
we're not getting these incentives. You're creating an unlevel playing field. And, and accordingly, across almost every single uh, public opinion poll, publicly published or privately seen, her popularity is low. And is that the disconnect? Is that, is that where the lack of connection is taking place in Rhode Island right now? That whether it's a lack of communication or ability to connect those things, the average Rhode Islander isn't seeing the benefit. And maybe because CVS is homegrown and started and went socked up by Rhode Islanders and grown by Rhode Islanders, that might be the Rosetta Stone that connects these two uh, universes. Well I, well, I think it's a both and. I, I love that part of our strategy is acquisition and we're attracting these world-class companies you know, to make investments here. We should absolutely do it. We should be smart about how we use incentives for that. Yep. In addition to that, we should be helping those companies that have the opportunity to export services and products outside of the state. So right. I'm not talking about the companies that sell to other Rhode Islanders at Corp. I'm talking about companies like CVS, where if they invent a new model yeah, to but, disrupt But most companies, those most small jobs. businesses in Rhode Island sell to somebody outside of Rhode Island, you know, unless they're little retailers. If they have the potential to yeah. grow, then they can create jobs that are created here that deliver value outside of the state as opposed to just competing with each other. I mean, we just uh, saw Craftswoman making share beautiful Italian yeah. uh, handcrafted leather bags, schooled in Italy. She's selling the vast majority of those online across the country or the world. Beautiful. So we should, Absolutely create, beautiful. We should create the conditions for her to do more of that and the companies to do more of that because that helps us. That, that keeps value here while exporting products and services outside of the state. We should be supporting the CVSs of the world and then we should, because there's only a few companies like that, I mean, with this acquisition there won't be any companies <laughs> like that, but there are a lot of mid-sized companies right. that are really important to the business ecosystem here and we should be creating the conditions for them to grow outside of the state while creating jobs here in the state. It's both acquisition from outside the state and enabling those organizations and companies that are here within the state. One of the great things about being in a downtown on the street uh, studio is we get to see it all. That was a fire truck. Here comes another fire truck. Let's talk about the fire truck issues. It's not all potentially good news. There could be some bad news. Let me raise a couple of one, uh, in the uh, documents uh, released by uh, uh, for the investors over the weekend was one is that there's they anticipate $750 million worth of synergies, yep. which in the corporate world means chop, 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 chop. Yep. Jobs that are redundant to each other or other types of achievements and cost savings, they see $750 million. Right. Uh, is that a little bit of a red flag? Should we be con conscious of that? And also understand that while some things may grow at CVS in Rhode Island, other functions potentially could be lost. Yeah. Well, there's two types of synergies. Yeah. You know, one are the ones you're talking about, which is how do we consolidate on the cost side? Yeah. Right. And then the other are synergies that are strategic yeah. you know, that position them for upside. So what you want, you'd have been concerned, I'd be concerned if they didn't announce that there were some operating synergies. Yeah, yeah. By combining they have two. to. Uh, and so here's where it's, it's better to be the acquirer. Yeah. Right. Because what's going to happen is they're going to look at all of the support functions platforms, systems, people that support those, and they're going to decide, we don't need two of these, we need one of them. And the jobs are going to get consolidated around that. When you're the acquirer, you get to decide which ones, and I would imagine a lot of those things are going to be CBS Health platforms, yeah. right? So it's not like that won't affect jobs at all, but, but the truth is we'll probably get more upside on the jobs yeah. you know, than we'll get downside. Let's, let's wait and see. Uh, but I think that's uh, I think that's going to be good. It must be quite a fire to have all these uh, or something. Stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Or there's <laughs> fresh donuts down fire. at Needs. But I think uh -huh. this, I think this could be good. So I think that about they had to do that to show Wall Street, you know, that they were going to be prudent. You know, I'd have been surprised if it wasn't there. I think that's a modest amount given. The yeah, size actually, of the the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and be, by being the acquirer, I think net net it's going to be a positive uh, for us here locally in Rhode Island. So let me raise the other potential. Uh, uh, Aetna had notified Connecticut officials that they were moving their corporate headquarters out of Hartford yep. and that they had leased space for at least the first three, four, five hundred corporate yep. officers down in New York City. Right. Is that potentially, uh, does Larry Merlot have a... Uh, 
yep. uh, helicopter and would he like to continue to live in East Greenwich but helicopter down every morning to his beautiful office uh, in some spectacular yep. skyscraper in the CBS Tower in uh, Manhattan? I don't know the answer to that question, but I will speculate, you know, that uh, one, you know, I think that the odds are really good that the center of gravity for the headquarters folks are going to be here uh, in Rhode Island. However, if I'm Rhode Island and the, the state officials, I'm not taking anything for granted. Right. I am working very hard to make Rhode Island strategic you know, to CVS and its plans, yep. which goes back to the story about it. Absolutely. Right. Um, and... Uh, and what does this mean for the long term of what CVS can continue to grow? Does yep. this mean, you know, acquirers seem to go on uh, spurts sometimes. Yep. And uh, this is a big deal. It's gotten a pretty good response. Stock didn't have a great day today. Yep. It was up or down a, a, yep. a point or two. I think it's trading at about $70. Built in, I think, yeah. Much. yeah. And... Uh, do we anticipate, boy, they're going to do this deal, and maybe even before it's all integrated, they're off and buying, you know, I mean, in a in a Jeff Bezos world, are they buying Target? Are they buying who knows what? Well, typically what happens is when you're buying a company that's exactly like you, you get more scale, right? right? You have to go get those operating synergies. Yep. In, right? This is a different kind of deal. This is a deal where, yeah, there's some operating efficiencies, but the real play here is the upside. Yep. Right? It's the strategic upside. So this can't be just we bought a, an insurance company and we have a chain drugstore and we have a PBM. You know, we just have these silos and they continue to operate. This has to be what? What if we look across those? How do we play with the parts or recombine the capabilities to transform the customer experience and the outcome? Right? And so. That's where these trucks are just driving around the circle here. They are driving, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parade. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think the real win here, and what's most exciting about this, is when if you can disrupt healthcare, yeah. right, then you can be the market maker that's changing the way value is defined in healthcare, and you get the significant portion of that value for your employees, for your shareholders, and for your customers. Yep. And that's what's so exciting about CVS playing offense, you know, to, to go acquire. Uh, and uh, it has the potential to transform healthcare. If you look at a lot of the press releases and the, and the, and the interviews that have happened so far, you know, they talk a lot about a healthcare hub and transforming the stores, right? So instead of it being a traditional retail experience it's a healthcare experience it's a place that I trust for my health care and it's a lower cost platform to deliver better health care outcomes than the healthcare players now the folks who ought to be worried are the more traditional players in healthcare that have a high cost structure Absolutely. that are about to get disrupted whether it's CVS doing the disrupting or someone else I'm glad that it's CVS that's in a position to do it um, for Rhode Island standpoint, it's always tough uh, in an election year to do anything bold and dynamic. Uh, leaders try to minimize risk and uh, do the safer things, especially incumbents. Is this a time where uh, uh, Governor Raimondo needs to say, listen, this is bigger than me. It's bigger than uh, my next re-election. I need to put together the best plan I possibly can whether people like it or not, because the potential is literally I could transform. I could add five to 10,000 and maybe tens of thousands more in the future uh, if I do this strategically right and we see consolidation of Aetna's functions into Rhode Island and also create the platform for just mammoth growth. Well, I think it's consistent with what she's tried to uh, position her administration to do, you know, right from the get-go, that it was about better, higher wage jobs and the conditions to do it, that it was about innovation. If you look at where her acquisition, you know, focus has been, here's an example of a company that's playing right into that narrative, yeah. right? And so, of course, you know, she's going to really work hard to make sure that we're strategic to CVS Health. You know, commerce will do the same thing, uh, and I think in the end it's about a smooth transition to the regulatory and board approvals, 
Right. Uh, and then it's going to all come down to the execution. You know, it's one thing to stabilize this and to bring the new capabilities in house. It's a whole other thing to create the conditions to work across those boundaries, across those business units, right. which is an unnatural act for a lot of organizations, right? And they need to create the environment for that to happen. Well, listen, and, a lot of this is not. Uh, Boom, we've innovated. Some of no, these no, no, things no. are moving hard uh, work. Uh, battleships. Uh, well, you think it's, you think it's going to be easier carriers. to disrupt healthcare? Yeah. Right. First of all, the incumbents are, you know, are not going to go lightly. Right. There's a lot of vested interest uh, in our healthcare system. Really? Uh, I can't right? believe that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so this is not going to happen overnight. You know, but this is a better path for CVS because they're changing the narrative from the one that existed before they announced this, which was they're vulnerable, you know, to being disrupted by yep. Amazon. Right now, it's the other way. In Amazon, they're sitting there saying, "What does this mean for our health plans, our healthcare plans? Right? What parts of this, you know, can we disrupt? It's not going to be so easy on the healthcare delivery side now. Right. You know, when you've got CVS buying Aetna." This is exactly what they needed to do to change the narrative. Uh, last couple things. Uh, first and foremost, it is your birthday today. Oh, you uh, had to do that. Right? We broke a story. Uh, it Happy is. Birthday. We broke yeah, a story yeah. earlier today that the argument on the sidelines of the New England Patriots between Tom Brady and uh, offensive coordinator uh, Josh McDaniels was tied to what to buy Saul Kaplan <laughs> uh, relative to a gift. <laughs> Oh, um, my goodness. Clearly. I must um, have missed that. I was so focused on Gronk. You know, Rob, like, like, well, doing Rob a world wrestling uh, move. was like, not yeah. pleased yeah. with what Josh and Tom had selected <laughs> and decided to take it out on some poor <laughs> defensive back. Uh, and also, Coach Hurley understood that it was birthday week and brought you a big victory uh, down at uh, Kingston against the you? Uh, Providence College. I told Park. you, right? No. You asked me the last time I was here. You did. You predicted you know, it. Did I tell you? That Absolutely. This, was, this is our year. This is you and I's year. Go Rody Rams. That was uh, a really uh, high quality win. You know, we'll we'll need more of them. But, but this is all without EC in the lineup. So that's uh, right. So we will not that. nickname you Fats, but depending <laughs> on how much <laughs> cake is consumed tonight, we may have to have a weigh in next thank next you. Monday. Uh, according. Uh, Saul Kaplan, thank you so much. Always insightful. This is the big deal. They made the biggest deal ever to hit Rhode Island. And uh, glad you could bring your perspective in. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great. Great to see you.